So coenzyme A is used for many, many different reactions. I'd like to draw the structure out, but I really don't think the structure of it is that much important. I don't think he really stressed the structure of it that much in lecture, other than the fact that it's made out of essentially, and I'm going to put this in quotation marks saying that it's an ATP, but it's actually uh, in the ADP state. At the 3 prime hydroxyl group, there is a, fi a phosphate um, to our sugar there. The other part of it is a pantothenate, pantothenate group in the center of it. That's what you get from your eggs and stuff like that. And then the, really the only important part of it, well, I mean that in terms of its, in this context, let me discuss a bit, is a beta mercaptoethylamine. The only really part that's important about this is that there is a cysteine residue. And this whole thing, well, all these things are really just the coenzyme A itself. So I'm going to switch colors, I guess, to, to white to really talk about what it's useful for is that it's used acid activation. So if I want to, any, any carboxylic type of an acid inside of our cells. If we want to activate it, we're going to be using coenzyme A as that. Uh, and then also we're going to use it for, for the synthesis of esters and for transporting fatty acids to the membrane, right? So say it's cold and we want to transport, uh, you know, saturated or unsaturated fatty acids depending on the environment. The way that I'm describing this is to say that it's coupled with an ester formation. What you'll realize is like, so I think I've talked about multiple times, <laughs> the fact that esters in your, your cell membranes are not very reactive, right? If I want to use something that's going to break that down, I'd have to use a very strong reactive species to do so. So you just take, you know, for example, your yourself and you stick your hand in water, well, nothing's going to happen, right? Your arm's not going to dissolve away, right? And even if I were to pour some acid in that water, it's nothing really would happen. And this is because esters are really, really stable compounds, right? So for ester formation, we have a very positive delta G. But what we can use as a reaction intermediate, so I'll just go ahead and put over here that it is a reaction intermediate, is the formation of a thioester, which uh, depending on whether or not you've been watching my uh, immunology videos, whenever I talked about complement protein th 3, that actually uses a, th a thioester in its substituents, but in this context we're using it kind of as an in-between step to synthesizing esters. And what a thioester looks like is this. So we have, this is the R group, this, this R that I'm drawing here, this is the rest of my coenzyme A, okay, so my pantothenate, my a ADP, or ATP. Um, rearranged, it's, it has three phosphate groups attached to it, but they're not in an unstable format. So this R stands for the rest of coenzyme A, the S from our cysteine, and then usually a carbonyl compound, and then the rest of the other molecule, whatever it is that we're involved with here. And this thioester um, bond here is really much less stable than that of a regular uh, ester bond. So if this compound is unstable, then um, its hydrolysis is going to have a very negative delta G. And if you're wondering why this is, you know, well, hey, Robert, this is just moving down the periodic table one row. Uh, sulfate isn't that much, or sulfur isn't that much different from oxygen. Well, yeah, that's true. But the thing is, if you think about it in terms of th this context, the distances, the length between the bonds are much, much longer, right? Because sulfur, you don't really think about that because we don't really see the impacts of this so much, in, in, at least in organic chemistry and biochemistry. But going down on the, the periodic table, just down one, one little row there, that changes everything, right? That's a huge difference in atomic radii. And so the way that I look at this is that because sulfur is so much it's so much larger, it's going to have a longer bond, it's going to be more readily accessible for the partial negative end of this carbon to be attacked by a nucleophile. So the delta G of it is definitely very negative, it's a very favorable reaction to take place. And so because of this, we can often couple it with unfavorable reactions such as the ester formation of a regular ester. Just if you're curious as to what the, the hydrolysis of this, the delta G is of, for not necessarily for uh, the thioester, but I guess I could say for the coenzyme as a whole, um, the delta G value for coenzymes hydrolysis is negative, and this is really similar to uh, ATP, so it's around 30 uh, kilojoules, that's a K. My hand is like on the very edge of my uh, little drawing pad tablet thing that I have.